Welcome to Fire Pinto's Garage. My name is Nate, and this is part two of the Pinto Air Dam. As you can see, we now have an air dam mounted. Pretty solid. Hit it once, and it'll reset. So, more to come. This is uh, the beginning of fabrication. So, part three will be wrapping this up. Let's get on. Brackets done here. These three are for actually mounting the uh, air dam on. They'll have the nuts welded on the back. I made them a little taller so I can possibly mount more fairing material to that. Two bumper brackets, two fender brackets, two frame brackets, and yeah, they'll be. A couple more brackets for spring ends here, and I think that's it. So we have all our little bracket tree mounted. You can see one here mounted to the air dam tube. There's another one here in the middle, and another one on the end. And we got the one back up here. There's another one on the other side. Got two bumper brackets up in there. Let's see right there. And we got our two fender supports on. So now, next step is cut round rod to go between all these brackets. And then there will be some welding going on. <clears throat> all right, we got the uh, strut rods cut, <clears throat> most of them. I think there'll be a few more, but uh, the three and a half inch ones will go from the end of the uh, air dam tube to the floppy fenders. Ten inch ones will go from the bumper kind of bracket, flat bar brackets, to <laughs> I guess towards the end of each uh, air dam. I'll show you. But, and then the 13 inch ones go towards the center of the air dam tube. So let's get welding. All right so this is a galvanized material at least this one here and uh, you probably should not uh, weld directly on the galvanized if you want a good weld. So I'm gonna try to use my uh, Hobo Freight sander. Uh, Chicago junk and just give myself a little bare piece of steel to, to weld on and wherever I can reach I'll probably, um, probably get this one here, a little bit on that one. This I'd, I'd like to just take apart and sand really well. So we're gonna do that, that part last. Up here, yeah, last. Um, I think if I, I get these, this portion here welded up. Uh, I can take that down and it'll stay sort of where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna get the welder all plugged in and let's get to it. Well, actually I'll, I'm getting ahead of myself. I gotta do the sanding. So let's see if I can do this one hand. Okay, something's going on here. I'm gonna tighten this, I think. Try it again. Might be dead. So, 
I'm gonna try to do the rest with two hands, so catch back with you later. All right, well we have the outside rods in, the middle rods, the outside ones on that side. Now we gotta take care of the flat stock pieces here. Don't be looking at my welds, I'm not gonna show you any of that because I'm not the person to be watching to learn how to weld, so just a good uh, disclaimer there. I uh, even gave my elbow a nice uh, crispy crispy burn right there. BB rolled down my sleeve, so fun times. So what we have to do now is take take off the aluminum tube. So we'll take out these three screws, leave that one in and that one in over there. <clears throat> so that this this can come out, these this flat piece and the other flat piece. Um, so we can clean off that excuse me, that galvanize and uh, get a place to weld. Okay, so that is off. Let's see right here. Uh, <clears throat> good takeaway to learn from here. I had these long screws sticking out the back. I think it was this one probably barely came off. I weld spatter on it. That one there, I had to grind off. But, and it still barely came out, so find a way to protect your screws on the back side when you're welding nuts on. Uh, one of my nuts didn't stay on, so this is why you don't get to watch my welding. But so we'll sand off the surfaces on here and here and get back to it. All right, so I'm going to show you how not to use the vice grips. <laughs> if it works, is it really a bad idea? So I was having a gap up here. I'm going to try welding that first. The jack stand and the vice grips is pushing up against there, which is pushing up against there into there. So we're going to weld that and that and that. And then we'll take this out and weld that. Oh, when you're screwing up your threads, make sure you chase it with a tap or else they get stuck like that. Okay. This was uh, quite the experience. Not a good welder, and I don't like welding standing on my head. So everything that you weld up here comes down here on top of you and burns the hell out of you. <laughs> but anyway, we got some crappy tack welds on. It's pretty it's pretty stiff. I don't want to reef on it too hard. I don't trust my tack welds that well. Um, but the next step is I want to add another round bar. I'd say from from here, across this one, and up to this point. So, let's see if I can get in here and show ya. I'll take this one and put it something like that. So it'd be welded here, right here. And right there, it'll be in line with that, I think, if I can do that. But yeah, one on each side. I think that'll take out any any extra flex I got here. And triangulate a bunch on this end. Uh, and that takes care of flex this way. Um, I think I may have to take care of more flex bending this way. Um, use this for reference. You'll have the uh, air dam hanging down if you hit the curb or something. It's going to want to torque that way. So probably get a round bar crossways in here somehow. 
Um, I could probably take one from here up to in here also. I don't know. We'll see. Can always add more later. All right, cut some more and continue burning my arms. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with the way it is right now. See, I added the uh, cross bar over here. A little more booger weld on there, but it's pretty stiff. A um, little bit of flex when I go like this, so I kind of wish I could attach the top of this up somewhere give that a little bit more give that a little bit more of an anchor point but I don't have a lot up in here I guess it could go up to that but that don't, don't look so strong either but you know, if I if I do hit something with this, I'd rather have I'd rather have all this stuff bend and break and have to fix that than to have to fix the car itself. So I think we're just gonna go with this. I mean, it it don't really move at all. So um, we're all triangulated to the middle. Yeah. So next step is to take the whole thing off all in one piece. It's kind of why I cross braced all this together, mainly just to have it connected so it can come off all in one piece and I can finish welding it. And it's probably going to warp a little bit, but I can flex stuff around. So. All right, I think it's lunchtime. It's past lunchtime, and then I'll get back at it. All right, well, it's welded. It's off the car. Can't say I had a good time doing it. I don't think I took off enough of the galvanized material that was fighting me. So hopefully it goes back on right. <clears throat> but as you can see, I still have the aluminum tube on there. Um, that part I left on as kind of a jig to hold everything, everything together. Um, so at least that part will go on right. But I'm worried about the car attachment points. So I think that'll be for tomorrow. But uh, I'm going to get in too close so you don't see my crappy welds. I'm going to have trouble getting them screws out again. But hopefully we get kind of a warm day out here so that I can primer and paint it. A little bit of Rust-Oleum. But up in Wisconsin here, that's uh, probably not going to happen. So maybe I'll hang it in front of the torpedo heater, get it nice and hot, go out and hang it outside, spray it, and bring it back in. It doesn't have to be super shiny i just don't want it to rust so all right more to come all right so we got the air dam mounted to the new frame bracket dealy turned out pretty well i have i have some nuts to weld on yet so putting these screws in with the jam nut so I can weld them without screwing up more threads. I'm going to have to go buy more screws because i got them all screwed up. But it's pretty strong. You can beat on this all you want. I'm going to have to figure out what to do with, with the ends here. Um, I don't know if I want them to like curl back or stay flared out. Um, but I do want 
to be able to like hit stuff, have this fold in. You know, you get back up here. <clears throat> like to be able to have this fold in without smashing up into the fender here. So, I'll get to the other side. It's easier for me here. So if I have it wrapped around like this, and it pushes up, it'll hit right into that fender. If I keep it flared out, to kind of uh, cover the front of the tire, uh, it seems to be a lot stronger and won't, won't hit the fender. So I think I'm going to take a piece of metal, attach it at an angle here. Probably an, another piece of tubing or something, square tubing and then attach another pad to screw to on this round bar here. Hold that out. So, and then we need to fill this gap on either side. Got to find a good material to do that with. I have some black plastic that I got from one of my jobs at one time that it actually wrapped a big fiber optic cable spool. I'm not sure what I did with that. I'll find that. That's probably what I'll use. Um, and then also, I think I'm going to add a bracket from the bottom of there to the middle connection there. Kind of not doing it so much with everything together, but we can kind of push down right there. And then that'll give me three places one there, the far one there, this new one here, and this one here. Give me a place to mount a cover to, cover, to block off, to block off this bottom part so air doesn't come through there. And then they'll be further down the road I'll have to make side panels too. Um, but I kind of want to do some redneck wind tunnel testing uh, with some yarn tufts, tuft testing they call it. Um, tape them all on the inside of here and just about on every surface and stick a GoPro down here somewhere and see where the air is flowing. Alright, well next step is to make my spring struts here, attach to that hole, attach to here, same on the other side. Well, okay, so it seems as though I overestimated the length for my strut springs. So I want to have like a tab like this screwed on to each end with a 45 degree bend in it so I can mount to the bottom. Oh man, this is hard to do. Up to the bottom like so somehow. I have that at a 45 up to there. But man, I probably need half the length of a spring. Chucks. So, what about... I'll hook this here. Can I use somewhere back here? Oh, that's a terrible, terrible camera angle. Actually, I could 
probably actually use these down here. I have a screw here. The original strut mount is pretty strong now now that I have the front braced up. But I bet you I could do that. That'd work out pretty well. I like that. So if you hit this, probably eh, my luck it would bump up into the fender. Ah, well, let's look underneath and see what else. Okay, so we could give this extra reinforcement from here over here to that very crusty, rusty uh, sway bar connection with my fuel filter contraption here. Looks like I do have a little dirt in the tank. Good old vice grip garage trick right there. Thanks, Derek. And yeah, that's pretty freaking rusty. Bet we'd have better luck with that one up there. Here to here kind of screws up my. PVC PCV catch can. Don't really have a lot of finger room for that. Well, that's a future me problem, I think. I love future me. Alright, so we have one of my Struts made out of a spring complete. Still need to put a hole here, but we're gonna figure out where that has to go once we get it up in there. So you can see it's kind of twisted, but if I had three hands, I could get it back and yeah. Trust me, it'll go the way it needs to be. <laughs> All right, so. We got this thing just clamped on here with a clamp for now. And it's going to attach here to that quick nut. We gotta figure out how far we want this to push out. A little bit of tension on it, but I don't want it to look awkward. Looks like I plan. Um, I wanted this bend here to be an inch and a quarter off of this edge. that off, drill a hole in there, I'll try to leave you guys right here, so just to stop the video. Alright, I'm back. It's in there, right? Ok, 
Okay, so this. Kind of getting this pointed forward or something. That'll look about right. Can't see what I'm doing. Shoes and hand grenades kind of territory right now. The hole. Black marks on everywhere except for the damn hole. <laughs> Did get one. Get my ass crawled under here. first one. I'm just going to put some sheet metal screws in on the bottom. I'm not going to through bolt it. I want to build in some points of failure. Rather than ripping everything all apart. It's something real bad. Work. Okay, probably got too long of a screw.
still on over there. It's pretty good. I'm thinking about if I want another one here. But you know, this really only needs to be strong enough to hold air. Hopefully 200 mile an hour air someday, but if I hit something I want, I'm gonna get my head out of here. Kick it with my knee. <laughs> okay, it's a little stronger than I expected. Um, This piece of metal here on the car is not very strong at all. Huh. Well, I think if I do hit something, the spring is probably going to be destroyed. Not saying that that's horrible or cheap, but I don't think it'll be as self resetting as I thought. Already kind of deforming this this end here. Both ends. Uh. Well, I guess we'll find out if it's a good idea one of these days. All right. Hi. Right. Back. I uh, wasn't satisfied with the little spring. Where'd that go? Right here. I was connected between here and here to this nut. The nut. And these two holes here. Um, this this bottom of the radiator support is just like paper thin. And any little bump is going to just wreck that. So, didn't want to do that. I want to go to the frame. So this is what I did. I took and moved the, the bracket and this bracket and put the big spring back in. So now, now we're hooked to, right to the frame. I think I'm gonna put a spacer under here because it's <laughs> it's piled on top of this bracket and it's hitting here and stuff. 
It actually should come out a little bit more, so I think if I put like a half inch round spacer under here, I have plenty of screw length to do that. That'll be fine. So, and the best part is, it actually works the way I was planning. <laughs> it works awesome. So I had to put a bigger washer on to keep that spring from popping out on both ends. Otherwise, it's, it's pretty nice. The spring is bigger, it doesn't deform. I really gotta lean into it. can't even get it to go and I just push on it but if I hit it it goes right away I like that I like that a lot but now I'm kind of worried about the middle <laughs> since we're all the way on the end over here might have to uh, might have to connect that I don't know. <sighs> I'll have to think on it some more.